Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today with a story that I think reflects something that we're going to hear a lot more about in the future, which is AI-generated pharmaceuticals. Fox News reports that a new AI-generated COVID drug has entered phase one clinical trials. So in terms of the drug itself, this is an alternative to Paxlovid. In other words, it is an oral medication that you take after you've gotten COVID, not a vaccine that prevents it in the first place. The company behind the treatment is called Insilico Medicine, which is based both in Hong Kong and in New York City. The drug is referred to as ISM-3312, and in their early trials, the company says it has some advantages over Paxlovid. That includes being effective against variants that are resistant to Paxlovid, being more stable and working for a longer period of time, and not having the Paxlovid rebound, which as Fox describes, is when patients recover from COVID and test negative, but then test positive again a short time later. Here's how the article sums up the process of creation for Insilico. Quote, To create its new drug, Insilico's research team first used its target discovery platform, Pandaomics, to identify the target protein within the coronavirus. Next, it used its in-house generative chemistry platform, Chemistry42, to generate new molecules that would attack the protein as a means of treating COVID and other coronaviruses. A phase one study means that ISM-332 is now being evaluated in healthy volunteers, and the expectation is that the results of the trials will be released at the end of this year. Said the company's CEO, Generative AI offers us a powerful tool for accelerating the drug discovery process and allows us to quickly identify new solutions that we hope can provide more potent defenses against mutating COVID strains and prevent another pandemic. Now, this is definitely a theme we're seeing more and more. A couple weeks ago, Vox wrote a piece, AI discovered drugs will be for sale sooner than you think. Among other things, the piece discusses just how much faster AI models can be than traditional drug discovery processes, which typically can take up to 12 years or more. Next up, we move to a follow-up from last week. In the wake of approvals from the Chinese government, the companies that have received those approvals are mass-releasing a huge number of AI models and applications. Baidu is among the companies that have released their LLMs following last week's announcement, and Reuters reports that 360 Security Technology and iFlyTech have just launched their own AIs, including voice recognition technology. In our next story, unions in Las Vegas are gearing up for a battle around AI. NPR's All Things Considered covered how quickly AI is infiltrating Sin City, noting that recent studies have suggested that between 38 and 65 percent of jobs in Las Vegas could be automated by 2035. Many commentators believe that these shifts are fairly inevitable. John Restrepo, principal at RCG Economics, said, Wherever the resort industry can replace their workers and not affect productivity profits or the customer experience, wherever they can do that with artificial intelligence, they will. The question is, how do you factor in and how do you adapt your economic development strategy, your community strategy, your resiliency strategy to accommodate a world where certain jobs no longer exist? Now, one of the answers is, of course, to fight back. As NPR writes, unions in Las Vegas are closely watching the changes. The largest union in Nevada, the Culinary Union, represents 60,000 service and hospitality workers in Las Vegas and Reno. Later this year, it hopes to have a new negotiated contract that includes protections against AI replacing jobs. Ted Papa George, who's the secretary treasurer of the union, told NPR, quote, We had a huge fight about tech in our previous contract. We're going to have the same fight this time around. Promising bellicose action, he said, We'd like to say we're going to be able to get to an agreement, but if we have to, we're going to have a big fight and do whatever it takes, including a strike on technology. Now, obviously, we've been following the writer's strike and the Screen Actors Guild strike in Hollywood. And part of the arguments of the unions involved in those strikes is that this fight would be coming for other workers as well. The fact that the Culinary Union in Las Vegas is gearing up for just such a battle suggests that that may be an accurate assessment. Moving back to the world of AI and the consumer internet, a new plugin for ChatGPT is getting people excited in a way that most haven't. That plugin is Canva, the popular image creation and design tool, and in some ways gives ChatGPT a new light multimodal feel. Decrypt writes, Tapping into the broad and rapidly evolving social marketing space, OpenAI has unveiled a Canva plugin for its popular chatbot, ChatGPT. The strategic move aims to make the process of creating visuals such as logos, banners, and more even more simple for businesses and entrepreneurs. Now, speaking of AI-generated content, a new report suggests that 90% of online content will be AI-generated by just 2026. The report comes from Europol and is called Facing Reality, Law Enforcement, and the Challenge of Deepfakes. 
Now, the report is actually pretty interesting, even if you're not in law enforcement. And I think even if you see that 90% of online content being synthetically generated by 2026 as perhaps a bit hyperbolic, it shows at least the scale and magnitude of the problem in many people's estimation. At the same time, it doesn't seem totally insane, if only because content that is created by AI is so much cheaper and faster to produce than content that's created by humans. The question is whether this type of shift is completely inevitable, and also what it will do for the value of content that isn't created by AI. Lastly, on that theme of content created by AI, Nunori is a completely AI-created influencer who has 400,000 followers on Instagram and has previously done fashion and lifestyle brand deals, and has now officially signed with Warner Music, which Nunori's team claims makes her the first AI pop singer. Forbes sums up the appeal for a company like Warner. Nunori won't get worn out from touring and promoting her music, and she can be restyled in seconds to keep in step with changing teen trends. And if she makes it to superstar status, she won't start making diva-like demands or demand an enormous pay raise. Given that ABBA's virtual tour is now making $2 million a week, which is a show produced entirely with virtual avatars and not the musicians themselves, it feels like this is the beginning, not the end of a trend. Anyways, friends, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. I'll be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.